Hey guys, uh, we are going to make an anvil. Um, we're going to make a railroad track anvil, but it's not going to be like the ones you've seen. I want to make this as close to um, kind of the picturesque anvil, you know, with the horn and everything on it that you see uh, the old anvils. Um, I'm not just going to grind the top off um, and cut a horn on it. I want to do a little bit more to it. Um, I'm going to add the horn out of some drive axle material that I've got. I'm going to bulk up the, the track with some uh, three quarter inch plate and make it wider. Uh, so I don't know what it'll end up weighing in the end. I'm, I'm guessing close to 80 pounds. Um, we'll see. But uh, uh, this is actually not the piece I'm going to make it out of. This is just kind of an example piece. The piece I've already started making um, and it came from a piece of track that uh, my dad owned. Kicked around our house the whole time I was growing up. Um, I managed to uh, get my hands on it um, after he had passed away. So um, I'm going to take it. I'm going to turn it into uh, even more of an anvil than it was when we used it growing up. We pounded on it quite a bit, but I'm going to, you know, scout the back and front so that it has that swept look to it and uh, put the horn on it. I'm going to bulk it up like I said. Um, and I've already started some of that work on it. I've started cutting on it. So um, I just kind of want to give you an example of what I, I had to start with. So stick around. Uh, let's make an anvil. Let's get to work.
Hey, so I'm out here cutting uh, all the pieces for this anvil, getting them all prepped before I start welding on stuff. And uh, I thought I'd just share with you a way I save money. Um, you know, I've had a, a larger grinder in the past, but it, uh, it didn't last very well. Um, it wasn't a high-end one. Um, but anyway, these these seven-inch discs, um, as you can see here on this rigid, you see it's got this plate here on the back, and the seven-inch disc, that's about a four and a half inch disc back there. So when it wears out, it comes down to about this before you you have to take it off and put on a new one. This one is about five inches. The one on there is just under five inches. Anyway, as it happens. Um, if your grinders match, and my Richard and my Will Milwaukee do, they both got the the uh, same size arbors, uh, same size, same fastening system, everything on them. Um, this uh, cutting wheel, if you buy one for a four and a half inch grinder, they run about three bucks per wheel. Um, if you buy one for a seven inch grinder, they run about three bucks per wheel. You know? So the difference between this, this is a brand new seven inch. This is the used. Um, seven inch but if you take that and as long as your rpms and everything match and um, as far as safety ratings go on your grinders you'll be you should be okay but I just put that on there and I use it right down to the very end you know so I get basically two discs out of one instead of buying a four inch four and a half inch disc uh, and a seven inch disc I buy a seven inch disc I use it till it's uh, worn down and then I just throw it on the four and a half inch grinder um, saves me a couple of bucks per disc um, and the seven inch grinder cuts way faster um, so you can use this four inch grinder for smaller jobs but thought I'd share that with you just a uh, quick money save. Hey guys, thanks for watching today. Um, I had some previous footage of this where I had done some stuff and I've lost a lot of it. So I apologize, we're gonna kind of start from here, uh, right where the cutting is. Um, I don't have a lot of this, but me starting the horn on it or anything, but. So I've got these three quarter inch plates that I've cut up. They're gonna be the top and the sides. I'm not quite sure how I'm gonna fill these sides. I'm probably gonna get another three quarter inch plate and cut a piece to fit in there. Um, I'll take some of these off and kind of explain the, uh, the anvil up to this point. So I've got these, like I said, these three quarter inch plates here. And I've, cut them, whoops, I've cut them to kind of match the sides and all the, the dish out here and whatnot. I got two of those. They're gonna go on either side. 
and they're very roughly ground right now. We'll clean those up once everything's welded in place. Uh, but uh, some of the stuff I lost, the video, was basically me making this horn and uh, doing some of the cutouts here. I've got some of that, so I'll include it, but not a lot of it. Um, it's just, and me grinding off the top here, so it's kind of level for me to weld on. Um, I think I've got part of this where I cut out the back, cut this back off here um, so that I could get the, you know, the holes in here. I've still got to put some other stuff in here for the, the, the hardy hole and whatnot, but uh, yeah. I've got to uh, kind of grind this off. There's going to be a lot of grinding work on that coming up um, once I get everything there. But I still have some grinding on the back side here to do and some cutting on these pieces, but it's getting kind of late tonight. Um, I've got to get dinner made, you know. Speaking of which, if you haven't checked out my venison chili, check that out, really good recipe. Um, also, I'll have an upcoming manicotti video where we make the noodles homemade. But aside from that, um, we will, uh, I'll continue on this. Uh, we'll, get, uh, we'll get these to where they are ready to be welded on. And then we'll, we'll do most of the welding in one day. Uh, it's got quite a bit of welding to get done. And then a whole lot of grinding to finish it off um, to where I'm happy with it. And then obviously we will do a, uh, we'll heat treat it. We'll get this, we'll get it nice and hot and normalize it. And then we'll, we'll uh, heat it back up and dip it in some, dip it in some water and get it cooled off. But uh, thanks for watching for today. We'll see you.